Zayman Weig from Van Weig Productions Live, and yes, we do have another person on the couch this week. <laughs> Layton's back to join us, I finally. Am. I am. Layton, I know you missed me the most, so okay. I'll just give you a second to compose yourself. <sighs> okay. Okay, anyways. <laughs> um, so, welcome to episode 8 of Couch Talk, where we will be discussing episode 8 of Doctor Who. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, um, I just love when things work out like that. Yeah. It's just great. Um, now, one thing that I need to address before we start, Layton has not seen the first part of this two-parter. So she can only, she, she, she can only speak about the second part, because yeah. she decided Sorry. to somehow see the second part before <laughs> the first part. I don't, I just, uh, uh. <laughs> But anyway. It's just how I, I digress. I you digress. digress. <laughs> Anyways, Sorry. but, failure. so, just so you know, she only knows stuff about the second part, not the first part. I mean, basically now I mostly know stuff about the first part. Uh, the there's, there's, there's some stuff there's about some the first part. You parts. need to know. Yeah. <sighs> some big, some big stuff. Fine, I guess I'll watch it some other time. Gosh. Tomorrow, I mean, what? <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, well, I guess obviously the first question is initial thoughts on the episode. Oh, man. I like evil Clara. She's fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think we agreed, was it? Did we agree last week we, we liked well, evil Clara? Okay, so just a little bit of spoilers for you. Um, it was a big plot twist that Clara was a Zygon. So, like, we didn't find out until, like, the last two minutes of the episode. Yeah. And oh. up until then, I was really annoyed with Clara, like, the whole time, because... Like, more, body, like body more than usual? Or not like... more than usual, but, like, <laughs> about as much as I was yeah. in those episodes. <laughs> that we will gotcha. not mention. Gotcha. I swear. Um, but she, you know, she was just, like... Okay, so you remember that computer thingy at the end that Bonnie was... As Clara was... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, the doctor was explaining that that was sort of like a Zygon computer, and he was like, uh, he, he was using it. He was like rubbing all along the, like the font, the, the fronds, and touching things, and Clara was like, do you want to be alone with that thing? And I'm like, Clara, <laughs> shut up, I hate you. Or like, she knew this one bit of information that was useful because she, uh, it was a Trivial Pursuit question, and she memorized all the Trivial Pursuit questions so she could win. And I was just really annoyed. And then it turns out she was a Zygon the whole time, so I was like, oh, she just took all the annoying parts of Clara until she needed to be yeah. awesome. <laughs> until she needed to be cool. <laughs> Which, I mean, at the same time, she eventually became the Clara we actually really liked, which is very <laughs> interesting because she yeah. doesn't necessarily like the Clara that is. I miss the wit. I miss the wit. Mean, <laughs> yes, the wit. The That's wit. what I miss. I she mean, was very witty. And I mean, we keep, we keep getting little bits of it, like in The Girl Who Died, when she uh, is talking with Robotin, and she's like, she almost talks her way out of it, and then Arya bursts in and yeah. is like, we don't fight you! And she's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Or, and everybody's but like, she, what are you doing? But she has a really good um, back and forth with Bonnie when she's trying to get information out of her. And she's like, Psh, no. And I'm, and I'm like, this is the car that I like when yeah. she actually does things. Yeah. Of course, Bonnie gets the information out of her. And of course, she does like nothing else the entire episode. Um, I think the doctor wanted her to give the information, though. So I think so, too. It wasn't really because, like getting because, information. Because of, yeah. I mean, he, I mean, why else would he? It, it was. It's like with the yeah. first episode, how he knew everything was going on. And oh he, yeah. And he pretty yeah. much set everything up to be how it was. Which I mean, people have said, you know, oh, it shouldn't be that way, but I, I, the I, I, at the same time, I think for this episode he should have. Yeah. Because this was set up so well. And because, because of the fiftieth, and they had this. The 50th was basically set up for these episodes. This is, the 50th was pretty much the groundwork for this and there was an, And there was enough time in between, and the result of it was ambiguous enough that um, anything could happen. The, the, the doctor could have orchestrated everything to, <laughs> and erased everybody's memories 15 times. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you said the last 15 times. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, overall, I mean, really, I'm going to compare this to the Macy Williams episodes because it, it kind of follows the same same pattern the kind first of. the first episode is kind of more action-packed and then the second one is like a little more deeper and yeah and also the fact that the first half is 
pretty much all set up, and the second half is like the aftermath. Yeah, yeah. the resolution. The resolution. Yeah. And I mean, it's that's kind of which I mean at the same time is fine. Which is I mean, fun. I have no issue with that because as long as you do it right. Yeah, I which mean, they did. Which again, I love this episode <laughs> as much as I love the rest, the last one. So I mean, I have no complaints really. Um, which means we'll probably be talking a lot about this episode that we did last week. But, uh, you know. And we um, have a whole nother person to add this creation. Oh, gosh. <laughs> YouTube's going to love us now. <laughs> oh. Anyways. Um, Anywho. But no. So, so yeah. So, what are, some, uh, what are some moments that you guys really, really liked uh, from this episode? You go first. <laughs> let me think. Hold on. Yeah, let, um, let the new guest go. Yeah. Let's We've done see. a lot of talking. Things I liked. I liked uh I liked it when Clara was kind of figuring out that she was in this like dream state or whatever. I yeah. thought the toothpaste thing was nasty. It was so <laughs> and, <laughs> and the I, I liked how she opened it up and there was like the window up and there was just a wall. Yeah, they're like throwing there's a lot of throwbacks to old episodes. Yeah. And the, just the first five minutes. Yeah. Like before the credits even start, there's like <laughs> uh, I felt like there were throwbacks to like Forest of the Dead with, you know, uh Donna being in the dream state, yeah. mm -hmm. and with the god complex with the windows not being windows but actually being walls. Good yeah. day if you're a big yeah. fan of walls. <laughs> walls. <laughs> yeah, and I liked it when she shook the TV and kept it messed from, up on. Yeah. yeah basically, up. basically create a new uh, idea yeah. for a game. <laughs> Yeah, we just create instead of making a console, make a TV that, that you move. It. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds so unpractical. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like the opposite of every single like advancement we've made in technology thus far. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, if you want it, make it. <laughs> <laughs> no one will buy it. Well, I don't know. Well, like, <laughs> saying that we're here, like, I'm well. <laughs> No, I will buy it. I probably will. I know. I know someone probably would buy Clara it. Clara would buy it, <laughs> so she could save the doctor. Yes, let's save the doctor with this giant TV screen. Yay. <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. I love her figuring out that she can actually control little things. Yeah, yeah. that was like a build up. And <laughs> and I love how even though Clara made Bonnie miss, she just smoothly like reloads and shoots again. <laughs> And I love how she just had a bazooka. Like, I, I don't know if I missed the part where she got a bazooka. Yeah. But yeah. Like, <laughs> but like for me, it was just funny. I yeah, don't they know. took they took over a unit, and she like went into this whole like armory thing, and was like, "Ooh, a bazooka!" Yay! <laughs> Yay! It's like I want this and this and this. <laughs> big explosion! Bigger explosion! Ooh! <laughs> Biggest explosion! Uh -huh. <laughs> um. Anything else? I'm trying to think. Um. I liked the doctor. <laughs> the doctor in this episode. Hold on, we'll, we'll get to that later. Just yes. okay. Yeah. Just, so, yeah so, his, so his, big, his big speech at the end was yeah. very. Yeah. I'll say. I'll yeah. say what I think you're gonna say. Yeah. I won't. I won't, I won't, I won't yeah. take that away. Let's just just scale yeah. the moments I won't, like first. I won't take that a, detail. About I won't them. take that away from you. <laughs> okay. Because you totally called it. Um. Yeah, I liked what you said. Let me think uh, if there was another moment I liked. <laughs> um, I love Osgood. I love the rapport that the Doctor and Osgood have. Um, just like, when, uh, so they didn't quite like, he didn't quite call the TARDIS to himself like we, like we predicted that he would. But Which they did. She totally should have. She totally should have. But then we wouldn't have had the great joke about the parachute. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't... It was, no. I thought it was But good. then we would have had Osgood and the TARDIS. Which yeah. we didn't need. Which everybody wants. <laughs> I mean, come on. We'll save that for the end, but... <sighs> Anyways. But I love the joke about how um, she's... I'm not flexible. <laughs> like, I love how Capaldi's first line after parachuting and, like, landing on a beach is just, any questions? <laughs> I feel like that's totally, like, it just fits so well. And, and like, it's hilarious. The writing, when... the writing for his doctor is fantastic yeah. in, in this whole season, pretty much. But, so he lands and he says, any questions? And Osgood's like, why do you have a Union Jack tip parachute? And he's like, it's camouflage. Camouflage? Well, yeah, we're in Britain. <laughs> and the funny thing is, when we first were watching the episode, they actually buffered right after Capaldi <laughs> yes. said any, any questions. questions. <laughs> and we were just like, That's yes! Like, Alright, end of yes. the episode, guys. End of the episode. Love it. Yes, Fantastic. good job. <laughs> the doctor spoke. We're good. Yeah. We're good. <laughs> Peter Capaldi said something awesome. We're good. Um, any other? I'm pretty sure you're going to take everything else, so. Probably. <laughs> 
Um, it's your channel. Like, <laughs> you know. My, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I agree with a lot. Um, I loved how I was totally right about Kate. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> see, she's she totally has her father's genes. Like he he was. I can't wait for the episode. I'm not. He, I'm not. At, I'm not even at the Brigadier yet, and I'm excited for him. He, he, Brigadier was such. He seemed very like he wasn't really as intelligent as the doctor, but he still had you know military experience and, was, and smart. So, he could handle himself. So he de definitely yeah. went, you know, down the And the she is tree. his daughter, so... You know. Obviously she survived. Are you having fun? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm making sure that my phone's on vibrate in case my mom tries to text me because yeah. she does oh, that. Oh, she does oh, that. And then, yeah. Um, <laughs> and know. then, let's see. Um, I, okay, I'll say this. I liked the idea of <laughs> having like a Zygon who's hiding as a human being turned back into a Zygon. That Although I feel they could have done way more with it because yeah. you know, last week's trailer for it, they kind of ended on like the guy, and it seemed like he was going to be a huge pivotal character. He really didn't end up yeah. being too much of a pivotal character. I mean, he was there for two scenes, and then he was dead, and then he died. He killed um, himself. So, I mean, I like the concept, but I just feel it could have gone a little... Yeah. It, it could have, you know, I mean, branched it out a little bit or yeah, something. Yeah, I think that's something that's a little bit lacking in the mo more recent series. Is that they, in the, I, feel, I feel bad that I keep calling back to the Russell T. Davies era, but it's true. The Russell T. Davies era was very good at having side characters that you cared a lot yeah, about yeah. and then doing something horrible to them or killing them. <laughs> Yeah. Which Mako is really good at killing. Which he is. But, <laughs> see, but you have to make us care about them. Yeah. I mean, I felt bad for him, obviously, because he just wants to live his life, and Bonnie came in and screwed everything up, yeah. and now, and then he just... I think Russell T. Davies' plots plus Moffat's dialogue would be, like, gold. <laughs> well, and keep in mind, Moffat did write some of... Russell T's episodes. Yeah. I know, but that's before he was the showrunner. Yeah, but I mean, you know, he <laughs> back when his and the, and his episodes are usually my favorites of the season. Oh well, yeah, because and he, then he became the showrunner. Well, because he created the Weeping Angels. He created I mean, the Weeping Angels. My he favorite introduced favorite. River. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, but yeah, but, but that was a good concept. It. It's, moving on. Yeah, good concept. Could have been done. It could have been done a little better. I could, you could have made me care about him a little more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I liked um, <coughs> was um, with the Osgood box. Yes. Um, red versus the, blue. There's, there's, yeah, it's kind of like the Matrix. It's like, which one do you pick? Do you the pick red the red pill or the blue pill? Yeah. And, um, then, and then it gets even deeper than that. And we'll, if we'll it, get into that <laughs> later. We'll, we'll get there. We, we'll get there. If the red yeah. pill or, and the blue pill both had little pills inside them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, and then, see, is there anything else I liked? Oh, um, I like at the very end, um, when, so, we'll talk about the reveal later, but basically the doctor's talking to Osgood. Yeah. That's how I'm going to say Osgood. Osgood. Because, yeah. Um, and he's like, and of course, so, so, okay, I have to swear with it, because <laughs> I, I love this, I just love this line. Spoiler. So. So we have the Osgood who's left from from the first episode, and then at the end there's another Osgood. I'm not we're not gonna say right now how that is. There's just two Osgoods at the end Spoiler. of the episode. But um, the doctor looks at two of them and he's like, he's there's he's like but we we well, no 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 that's not the line. It's the line where it says oh by the way huge fan my heart. <laughs> And, like, at this moment, like, you know, probably either one or both of them are actually... We're, like, internally um, screaming. Well, no, like, like they're either, like, Zygons who are just really, really nice Zygons, or, like, one is human, one isn't human. Because we still don't know... We don't know. We don't know which Osgood was killed on, on the plane at the end of season But you see, eight. at this point, I don't really care I don't anymore. care either, but the, for what we're talking about, it kind of matters a little bit. Yeah, but, I mean, just the fact that, you know, he's... He's probably telling that to one of the Zygons, it's like, you know, the fact that the Doctor has a Zygon that actually, you know, 
likes him. Actually takes an interest in what, you know, Osgood yes. wears, which is pretty much saying she pays attention to the doctor too. Yeah, I mean, I mean they treated each other as sisters, which was yeah. heart You know, because yeah. in, in, in the first part, there was a grave coat <coughs> my sister. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll see it when you You could have gone it. without saying that, <laughs> just for her sake. Yeah, but it, anyway. It's all context, so she doesn't know. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Apparently, I don't know anything, so I'll just sit here quiet for the rest of the episode. No, we'll, we'll have stuff to talk about. We'll yeah, we'll, we'll have talk. About. So, um, yeah, the other stuff we, we need to get into more in detail, but. Mm -hmm. um, but that's it for initial thoughts. We're only like, what, 20 minutes into this video? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out. It's just more work for me. Yeah. <laughs> Poor thing. Yeah. Anyways. God forbid one of us curses. I felt so don't, dirty. Don't. Okay. <laughs> you, Nobody curse in this episode. You beeped out one of my words and I was like, oh, I felt so horrible. I was like, ah, I'm a bad person. Also, those beeps were really loud pitched. Like high pitched. <laughs> well, they have like, to be. It was, no, but it was like <laughs> literally like, dr like bursting my eardrums every time I came on. I'd be like, oh, Connor, stop cussing. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I remember when you that comment. I remember. Yes. Um, anyway. but, but I think it was, yeah, Leighton said, I think the first thing we definitely, we, we can't go without talking about this, Peter Capaldi. Oh, Holy my freaking gosh. cow. Okay, this is why we love Capaldi as the doctor. Yes. My gosh. Like, I wish he we pretty had much this. gave the best doctor monologue Ever. Yes. Ever, 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 like it, it, it started out really jokingly, then it got more serious. I, then it I, got I, really personal. Yeah. I mean, there were very, there were a lot. That that whole scene was a freaking oh roller coaster. Yeah. with Capaldi, like he was very like jo joking, and he pulled an American accent that was very creepy. Yeah, that was <laughs> not an American <laughs> accent at all. It was, it was like when Missy pulled that American accent when she poked the holes in the Dalek. Yeah, and it, it was just as creepy. <laughs> But, um, and then, um, he's talking to the other Clara, and it just got so real, so fast, and this is the Capaldi that I was, like, that I had expected in season 8 and sort of got, but not really. But no, like, really, though, I feel series 9 is basically Capaldi's doctor, like, this actually is, becoming the this, doctor. This is the doctor's prime, as far as the 12th doctor. Yeah. This is probably gonna be his best season. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not... Um, discounting his future, you know, episodes as the Doctor, yeah. but I really... I mean, he's, he's pretty much what we're saying is he's set his bar pretty high. He has set yeah. his bar really yeah, high. Yeah, that was like... And a lot of that is to do peak. with the... <laughs> a lot of that is to do with the writing, but you you have to give, like, but a yes, lot. The writing can only go so far. It's Monologuing is hard. Makes... Monologuing is hard. And he did a fantastic job. He hit all of the peaks and valleys. I'm I sure don't... Throw in after <laughs> <laughs> I mean... If I wasn't watching it with you guys, if I was watching it like alone in my room, I probably would have been like crying out of pure emotion, or just been like, oh, <laughs> Peter Capaldi, it gives me so many emotions. I mean, like literally, when I when I was watching this, I was like, oh my gosh, Capaldi, you are freaking awesome. We this is why you. I like you we as the you. no, I love you as the twelfth Doctor yeah. because like I was trying to picture any other doc like having this monologue. being semi close but like like okay say okay so the other the only other doctor I can see being close to this is kind of Matt Smith's but here's yeah. here, here's how I'm thinking of it. Matt Smith would be like right here. Capaldi is like pretty much <laughs> up there. He, he's that like water pipe up there. <laughs> I mean yeah I mean at the same time you know there were some times where Matt Smith's doctor yeah, almost, emotional, yeah. almost reached that point, but he, he held himself back. I, I mean, yeah. that's, yeah. I mean, that Stonehenge monologue was... Okay, well, I'll, I mean, there's, no, there's stuff after yeah. the Stonehenge that yeah. he... And that one is purely, like, victorious, and not in that way. <laughs> Don't no, you dare. No, but there's like, the, the one from, um... I haven't watched um, Matt Smith's episodes in so long. Oh, really gosh, long what's it called? Um, uh, Rings of Akaten. Freaking rings of Akatan. Matt Smith's monologue to the, the demon son thing. No, no. I actually, no. I did that monologue for a class. It was awesome. Well, yeah, because of reason. But, I mean, Smith was 
was crying. I know. Holy crap! He was, was crying. I was crying for ages. That was that was a very good shining moment in that season. Yeah. That was probably the high point of the season for yeah. me. I mean. Yeah. But like Matt Smith's doctor, like I think what made this monologue so effective is that whereas Matt Smith's doctor is more of like a playful person, so it gets scary when he gets like upset. Uh, Capaldi is more of like a down to earth. Yeah, like down to earth person. Mm -hmm. And then when he gets emotional, it's like more well, of a right. oh, oh, I am feeling my, like it's like a sh waves rocking a yeah. ship. Even before then, when he was being all like game show hosty. Yeah. Like he, it, it was like in um the girl who died when he was like it's like not the puns are uh, no 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 banter I'm against banter. Yeah. Yeah. And then Sam Swift is up on the gallows making doctor doctor jokes and he's having a rapport with him and yeah. I'm like. That actually touched me a little bit. Yeah. So, because um, he was doing it. So, dude. so, and and you can tell he's really trying to break the tension, and then he just gets real with it. Yeah. And, and it's just oh, and oh. and the re like the uh, one way you know it really is actually working is <clears throat> when Kate actually just explodes on the doctor and says, "This is not a game." Yeah. Like she's literally yelling at the doctor, and the, the doctor's like, "Of course it's not a game." That's the whole. None point. Of I know. This was, is war. I love this how, is, and I love how he was. That that whole thing with him, like before he got really serious and before he had that huge monologue, when he's being ridiculous, mm -hmm. he's trying to show them how ridiculous they yeah. sound. He's like, it's like, yeah. like you you said you said in the scene, he's like everything he said. We were just like, he's such a dad. <laughs> he, like, he's he so is. Dad. Dad. I mean, I mean, oh, it's, it's not fair. So oh, it's not life fair. Is fair. And I'm like, he's. he's <laughs> He's like, such a dad. Like he, he's the kind of doctor that I expect <laughs> would make like a dad joke. Like yeah. if if like some crap goes down and someone says I'm sorry and he's like hi sorry I'm the doctor. <laughs> now yeah, keep in mind um, the doctor is actually a grandfather. So yeah. he was is, 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 is as, as far as we know he's still a grandfather. Oh my gosh. Could you so, have you guys have you guys seen have you guys seen The Forgotten? It's like a graphic novel about. Yes, I have. Yes, I, I have. I have yes. it. If you, if you, if any, if, if either yes. of you want to borrow it, it's really great. I think I have it actually. I have. I, I have, have it at my dorm. It's great. If you want to borrow it, but um, oh my gosh, they have a heartbreaking moment at the end with Susan. It's not even Susan. Oh yeah. It's yeah. not even Susan. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not even. Susan. It's like just a projection that's like helping the doctor throughout. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically his Clara. Pretty much. <laughs> except, no, except it's Tennant's doctor. It's te except it's David Tennant, which is mm, Again, my heart. You know. <laughs> he will always be my favorite doctor, but Capaldi is coming very close. Capaldi's to... already surpassed every other doctor <laughs> that I've been like, like literally as I was going through the different seasons, like catching up or whatever, I was like, oh, Chris Rapp is my favorite doctor. Oh no, David Tennant's my favorite doctor. Oh, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> Matt Smith, but no, I'm like, I, I, I'm, the, I'm the same way with like everything. Like, <laughs> it's like if you ask me what my favorite episode is, I'm like, it's this episode. No, but then there's this episode. I, they're all my favorite yeah. episode except for certain episodes that aren't my favorite episode. Yeah, that should. Not I have I have I have my non favorite episodes, and I'm pretty sure. Like even when I'm going through the classic series, like so, if, like, every single one that I'm gonna go through will be my favorite classic Doctor as mm -hmm. I'm going through yeah. them. Oh, yeah. I I don't think I'll ever have an ultimate favorite Doctor. And ever. see, that's why I hate when. And I know we're totally off topic. Now. We are, but we're, um, we're, but we're we're talking about Doctor Who. At least, Who's yeah. Now. At least you're still talking about Doctor Who. <laughs> but see, and this is why I hate whenever we're at our Doctor Who meetings and they ask, "Who's your favorite Doctor?" You can't, That's such a hard you question. can't truthfully, truthfully answer that question yeah. because if you've seen classic and new who, you at one point like all, all the doctors. So it's like yeah. you saying one is better than the other is actually you lying because it's like, yeah. no, my, I like all of them. My default is always going to be Tenet though. Like whenever people ask me the question, I'm just going to say Tenet because reasons. Wow, well, you and <laughs> probably most other fangirls. But I'm not doing yeah. it because everybody else, I'm doing it because he is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so back to the episode. Yeah, Peter so Capaldi that was, that was is amazing. Peter Capaldi is amazing in this episode and this season and the story. Yes, love. Yep. Not even. <laughs> I love yeah. him. Um, I want to be his companion for real. Like, like if I had to choose a doctor that I would be a companion, would be his him. would probably be it. His <laughs> just because he's so sarcastic and I love sarcasm. Yes. Like, that's like the pinnacle of if you 
more sarcastic, I like you, so... His, or David Tennant, or Christopher Eccleston, yeah. or it's probably one of the classic ones that I'm not at yet. <laughs> um, so, so one thing um, I want to briefly talk about yes. when, with the boxes. Briefly. <laughs> Try to keep it brief because it's. I mean, it's the red pill, the red pill and the blue pill. Uh, kind well, of pills not, not that. Um, out of the box. The actual appearance of the boxes. Oh, oh yeah. Um, now, if if you have recently watched the fiftieth, or you you remember the fiftieth, um, you remember the moment came in a box, which with things on the side of them. A big red button. Big. Yep. Um, <laughs> well, these boxes looked very similar. To that box, maybe a little flatter because I think the well, I think a little bit more the, uh, the outside designs on the it, box they were, were very they were very similar. Though. But I mean, yeah, it was very similar to the Doctor's Moment box, which one I feel he probably kept and is like just locked it away so he doesn't you know have to use it ever again because yeah. you know I, I doubt he returned it to the California. <laughs> False. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I doubt it. From what we've seen of the Gallifreyans of the time. From what we've seen of the Doctor, hello. Hello. <laughs> Does he ever return anything to Gallifrey? I don't think so. <laughs> They're still waiting for his TARDIS. They're still waiting for Gallifrey. They're still yeah. waiting for Gallifrey. <laughs> he hasn't even returned Gallifrey yet. But I mean, <laughs> he but on the he just can't find it. <laughs> yeah, but it sucks. So on the note of you know the boxes looking like the Doctor's moment box. There. There, it was a lot of what drove that monologue with Peter. Yeah, Kyle. and he actually name drops the moment box. Totally. Yeah. Like, and it hardcore again, again. It fit perfectly because the boxes pretty much were the same thing. It yeah. was like, do I destroy my people or do I not destroy my people? And that's that's yeah. ultimately ultimately that's what this episode is asking. Do the Zygons really want to kill or like survive? Or or do the humans really want you know to kill everybody, or do they want to live in peace? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, Matt Smith, duh. Uh, Peter Capaldi kind of played the part of the uh, like bad wolf. You know, he was the conscience. He was the one yeah. kind of trying to talk. Ouch. About <laughs> 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 um, but anyway, but no, break, hey. <laughs> but no, like yeah, he he really was the word of, you know, reason in this episode. Mm -hmm. um, Which is good, because yeah. that's kind of what you want. <laughs> and, I mean, we've already talked about how freaking good his monologue was, and but I, there's, like, there's so much in his monologue that I, I don't want to spend too much time on because I want the people to actually watch it, and then they can get their own thoughts For real, if you haven't watched it, I doubt they're watch watching this if they haven't watched it, though. Let's be real. <laughs> well, you know, there's people. There's people. <laughs> there's people. You know who you are. Well, then you're getting a very bad, broken version of this episode, because yes. we are all over the we place We are all right over the place. <laughs> um. Yeah. If we did a play-by-play -play like we did last episode, it would take too long. Take so we're just going to go over We're going to simplify it down to... Yeah. Hop to the highlights. Um. Yeah, but I mean, like, so basically he, he's, he, um, he's saying, um, he's saying to the Zygon Clara and then Kate, he's, he's saying, like, and this was interesting, he, he asked the Zygon Clara, what is it you exactly want? And she's like, yeah. war. Can we talk about Bonnie for a second? Yeah, because oh yeah, cause... oh yeah, the Clara Zygon is Bonnie. Which That's is a really Bonnie. weird name for a Zygon. All it's, I can think of is the animatronic from Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm sorry, but or or, or the or the <laughs> I I can either think of that or the little girl from Toy Story Three. There's no mm. in between. <laughs> and I mean, and it, neither of those are what are. are and I mean, it, it's, Zygon's a weird character, so I mean, weird names fit really well. But yeah. Bonnie, it's like the least threatening name. I don't know. Anyway, I, mean, you know. I love how like um to I. Okay, Bonnie's rapport with the Doctor during that monologue, I thought was actually really interesting because this was like a three-dimensional character trying to be a two-dimensional character, which is fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, um, you know, they start off um, episode one by saying, you know, Zygons are just like everybody else. They're capable of good, they're capable of evil. They're not, you know, warlike by nature, even though every time we see them... Um, they want to start a war. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, but in the first episode, which you haven't seen, spoilers, just I, heads up. Just do them. Throw them um, out there. <laughs> there's the two um, girl commander Zygons. They technically were still saying they wanted peace. 
I know, but and I know, so, but there's, but um, but the, but those, okay, but you don't see a whole lot of those items I mean, that wanted. Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, of, like. But you have to keep in mind, but, like, like most most of the zygons that want. I mean, it makes sense for the scenario that it is because what they tried to do was um, integrate these zygons into human society. So which they, was so they had, working for which a was while. working for a while. So it makes sense what I'm about to say. But like all of the zygons that wanted peace were shown as humans, and all of the zygons that wanted war were shown as normal zygons. Yes. Which again makes sense for the plot. Except for Bonnie. Except for Bonnie, <laughs> because we had to have evil Clara because Jenna Coleman is amazing. Yes. Bender is evil, but you know, just saying. I just love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I said this earlier. Even though I don't know how much I'm gonna miss Clara. I will definitely miss Jenna because I appreciate her so much as an actress. Yes, because it's really not her fault. That it's really Clara... not her fault that Clara isn't that good. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, anyways. And anyways, and but anyways, but anyways, but anyways, um, yeah, um, just that whole, just watching, because she doesn't have very much dialogue because it, again, it's a huge doctor monologue. Mm -hmm. Um, but he does ask her questions. He has a conversation with her, and he. The Doctor, in any incarnation, is very good at getting the bare minimum of, like, mm -hmm. he, he gets down to, like, the nitty-gritty of it. He takes away all the bull crap and just, like, strip, strips all that away and just gets down to it. Um, which is basically what he does with uh, Bonnie. You know, yeah. He's like, why are, like, uh, he's like, why are you even doing this? What, why did you start doing this in the first place? And he's like, because they're not treating us good. <laughs> it's like, alright, or that... It's, it's like, or it's like they're leaving us to fend for ourselves. Yeah, like everybody else on the planet. She's like, it's not fair. <laughs> oh, it's not like, fair. oh, it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but even after that serious, like, the the serious turn, just Jen. This is why Jenna Coleman is such a great actress because she has these expressions that that she's trying not to reveal everything. Like she, he asks her what he asks her what she wants, and she says war, and. Uh, I forget what exactly he says because we couldn't hear it very well. But <laughs> through some convoluted way, he basically proves that you don't just want war; it's something else. And mm -hmm. yeah. it's it's just, it's just a great episode. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, it's a beautiful. But yeah, no. Like as I was saying, like with him talking, and like again with getting underneath Kate's and Bonnie's skin at the same time. At the same time, the, the moment I just loved was he got Kate to finally accept, you know, okay, violence is not the answer in this solution. There's there's a way better solution than this. And then once he got on to under Bonnie's skin, I just love the line you said, like, um, you know, just like the last time, you know, I always have to have like you know how I how'd you how, like how'd you do this? Oh, I had to Clara in my on the like how what was it? It's like Clara on my mind. Or yeah, something? I uh he's like uh, I let Clara get into my mind. Yeah, I let Clara get into my head, get into my head. And, and, and then he's like, and trust me, she never leaves. Heh <laughs> <laughs> irony. She never leaves the head. She, she might leave Physically. Physically. <laughs> but she probably will leave physically very soon, but But I mean probably until then. <laughs> but again, again. And I love how much this parallel is 50. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. I like it. Another. Uh, I mean, yeah. But like, Moffat likes to parallel himself a lot. He's yeah. like, but see, I'm this good. one makes a lot more sense yeah. than his previous ones because, it, one, it yeah. makes perfect sense, and two, it actually extends upon a story that yeah. was originally like supposed to be that. done, yeah. but couldn't because it was the 50th. Yeah. Because yeah. other, you know, the time war had to be explained and everything. Yeah, yeah. I definitely do and not then, argue that. But, I mean, like, literally, the same thing that happens to the doctor happens to Bonnie. Like, she literally gives in and... And, and I look, there's this great scene where she's just like, you don't understand. And, and the doctor's just, like, oh, oh, yes, oh, I do. You don't think I understand? And I think that's what kickstarts the monologue, isn't it? No, <laughs> that's actually after. Yeah, that's after. 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 But, or, or, um, but see, when after, no, it's after he says, you know, when Kate's like, this is not a game, and he's yeah. like, no, it's war, and then he literally starts going into it, and he's like, like, he gets into, like, how he's, again, he brings up the time war, I mean, 
Because you kind of have to. Whenever you bring up the time war, you know it's going to be heart wrenching. Um, yeah. And he's like, I fought in a bigger war than you. And well, I, ever. I didn't ever. Even understand. And we all know, obviously, it's the time war because that, that was the biggest war in the universe. It's literally the biggest war ever. Yeah. Um, and he said, I did some terrible things. I did things I did not like. But it's like. And he, when he was screaming about the screams. That haunt him. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, I, like there's there's people that died that like I like to this day. Every time I close my eyes, I just hear I just hear the and he he starts getting like sad, like mad sad, like he turns on. And like suddenly and you kind of realize he was like suffering some kind of like PTSD type of deal. Oh look, it's Alex. Hi. Oh, <laughs> Hi. Hey. He can't talk anything about this episode because he's seen nothing of it. Wait a minute, who died? Everybody. Everybody died? Everybody died. Everybody died. Uh, Even the doctor. Get out of here. Just uh, everybody. Uh, Get out of here. Spoilers. 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 Oh, okay. Can we just watch the episode again? No. I'll, no. Watch, it. I'll watch it with you. Later. I'm tired. I'm going home actually. <laughs> yes. I'm hungry. Oh uh, yeah? Well, I worked. Oh yeah? yeah. I worked well, too. I worked eight hours uh, today. <laughs> I danced for like eight hours today. So. Well, at least that was fun. Alright. I sold the yarn. <laughs> oh, okay. Watch it Yarn! Anyways. Another so one that loved. I really... Okay. Close the door. Shut, Shut the door. Shut the door. Shut it. I feel so loved. Shut <laughs> that door. You're welcome. I will be exterminated. Hi. Hearts. Okay. Um. Another one that I really loved was when um, uh, he was going on about... I think this is him delving into Bonnie's character. Um, Because... Uh, uh, he was, I think it was after Kate closed her box, and she's like, you think they'll just forgive me after what I've done? You think they'll just let me go free? And he, and he's talking about how she's oh, yeah. playing this big grandiose thing, as like, I'm the unforgivable person who's done something unforgivable, and I can't go beyond this point now. I, there's, it's, it's the point of no return. And he's like, well, guess what? I forgive you. Yeah. That was awesome. And I was just like, I, it, it was very, it, it was again, reminiscent of, um, the master, like from season three finale. Yeah. I forget what the um, episode is. I think basically the one the doctor will forgive you. The doctor is very I mean the doctor <laughs> forgave Clara for utterly betraying him. Yeah. yeah. Go away <laughs> But um I mean He's a right sucker. Yeah, you know. Um but yeah, no, like he the reason he can forgive her is because one, he's like pretty much he's been through everything. Yeah. yeah. And he knows how it is, and it's like... Probably because he feels like he's done the worst atrocity he's ever. He's done So he, he feels like, you know, who am I to not forgive? Who am I to judge? You know? Him? So, I mean, really, of this episode, you, you know, this, without saying, you know? The, this, this monologue is probably... The highlight. Pretty yeah. much the biggest part of the episode. The pinnacle of the episode. And, I mean, really... The pinnacle. Really, if, like, Sorry, if, 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 if you had to pick... Like, just one part of the episode to watch. It had to be this. It's this scene. Yeah. Because the other scenes are like, you know, they're okay, you know, they're yeah. interesting, but they have no impact. They don't hold a candle. No depth. Nothing yeah. in this season holds a candle. So, I mean. I'm just going with the trail mix that I did not eat. Okay. Okay. Um, excuses, excuses. You just want to be out here with us. <laughs> um, you caught me. <laughs> but no, so then. Um, so obviously, you know, we get Bonnie who does, you know, eventually give it. the right thing. And because, then, because, um, I love that when she figures out that there is actually no control in, on these buttons. Yeah. She's like, these buttons don't do anything, do they? It's just a box of buttons. Well, no, she said there's nothing in the box. Yeah, there's nothing in the box because it's just buttons. Yeah. He's like, yep. Yeah, I like his grin too. He's like <laughs> because he's still on that emotional yeah. high, yeah. but at the same time, he's really want, he's, so, he's, he's proud, like he's proud of himself. Snicker. He's like, <laughs> yep, I did something clever but, as but, usual. But at the same time, I feel like he's proud of her for figuring it out. Yeah, yeah. Because um, he says like you're starting to think like me now. Yeah, yeah you're actually starting to think about what what happened. what would happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then so obviously you know Bonnie calls off all the. Like Splinter Group Zygons and says, guys, um, it's cool. We're, we're all we're good. cool. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no need to do this anymore. JK Lull, never mind. We're free or something like that. <laughs> it's like everything's going and, to be And I think right. she put it in a way that like the rebels were standing down, so it's like we won. Yeah. yeah we don't have to fight anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, of course. She stops being Clara. 
Yeah, which, which I'm getting into right now, actually. <laughs> um, so then, as I said earlier... How uh, dare! <sighs> I'm ruining everything! I'm dropping sorry. everything! This is what happens when I come! Oh, uh, this is actually a Connor right here. <laughs> the table would be flipped over. <laughs> yes. Um, I just pulled something. I'm sorry. How dare you? It's all my fault. Um, it's all your fault. Do you forgive fault. me? <laughs> yes. I forgive you! Oh, of course um, I forgive you. So then, obviously, towards the end, we have one. We have the Osgood who is with the Doctor, and and of Clara. course he has. He like sends Clara. That he's like, I'll be there in a minute, and you know he's gonna bring up. So which one are you? And see, I like her answer. She's like, I'm Osgood, but I will answer the question when I absolutely need to. And I think pretty much at this point, it's like. Osgood, you don't need to. Osgood, you we don't, don't need care. To. We love you. Because even, love even you her side going counterpart was like, it was fine with the peace. It was like, I, I, I am on the same side as the humans. I want the peace, and I'm going to do everything to protect the peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had a bond that's like. They had a sisterly bond, and that's so that that's that's why you know the Zygon was good with the human Osgood. <laughs> but then you know, you know. And that's the part where I, out, of, out of nowhere, another Osgood just appears. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch it again. Just very erratically. It's like it's like it's like. How think, did you not see it? It's like think you of Osgood, and then you make a copy, and that copy comes out. Like yeah. that's kind of what it looks like. It's like where yeah. did she come from? Where did she like, go? There's like no where other place she could barely <laughs> come from. Um. And then I love the doctor's like. Whoop. <laughs> and of course, it's it's Bonnie. Yeah, it's Bonnie taking. She's like, I, I couldn't be Clara anymore, so why not? Yeah. Well, and she wanted to take up the mantle of the second Osgood to keep the peace. Yeah. yeah. So it's like. Which I think it's cool. It's like overall, it's like good job, Bonnie. You made the right decision. You listened to the doctor, like you should have listened to. And I think, and I think it was very good at at pressing the point because I don't know. I haven't seen any any major Zygon stories from the classic era, but I don't know if there if the, if any of them pushed that fact that Zygons aren't are are generally a peaceful race. They're capable of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is generally a new topic mm -hmm. that which I am now confirmed. So, <laughs> um, I thought that was a really good resolution for Bonnie's arc, for the Zygons' arc, yeah. that they can be redeemed, they can live peacefully, it's just when they get riled up and have a temper tantrum and think that life is unfair, that's when stuff starts to go to crap. Yeah. yeah. And, I mean, now, general life lessons. Yeah, <laughs> general you know, life lessons. You know. Good for the kitties. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, you know, now that I think about it, there's like, this this season, there's been two parters of pretty much every episode so far. <laughs> Literally and, every episode. But, you see, I feel tagging the fiftieth onto this, like this like two parter a was a great beginning to the end in just two parts. Yeah. yeah. Like it came, it started on the basis of the fiftieth, and it ended in the best way possible, only mm -hmm. in two episodes. I agree. It's like that's that's a good two parter if you can I mean, yeah. find a really good resolution for it. Um, Which they. Obviously did. Yeah, so it's great. Yeah, good resolution. Yeah, good writing, Moffat. Yay! And, uh, Moffat Peter, and the other guy. Peter. Yeah. Uh, I uh, harness. That other guy Peter didn't harness, write the last yeah. monologue. I'm sorry. I mean, maybe he did, and maybe I just insulted the crap out of him. I'm sorry if he did, but I mean, it wow, like your it first day back. It felt like a Moffat monologue. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, it worked. So. Can you yeah. just like write the monologues? Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. What's what's the group's overall consensus? And we have a story from Layton this week. Finally! <laughs> <laughs> I so wish that I had seen the first episode. Yeah. Because I feel like it would have been such a but really think, good emotional role. But, I, but I'm, inter I'm interested to, uh, as to what you think. Just oh, on the second own. part. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, I got... Re uh, I'm not going to say just, that. Just, just sit, yeah. But anyway, um, this episode alone, uh, with the small bit of confusion that I faced in the beginning when I was trying to piece together what I'd missed, um, I still say it was probably an eight or nine. It was very good. Probably closer to the nine area. But like it was good. It was it was I don't know, I didn't feel gypped of anything. I didn't feel really like any anything was like, oh, I could have been so much better. Actually I was like, oh well, well, thank god it was like good, you know. Want the one part we talked about earlier, but besides that. Yeah, so that's why I gave it like an eight or nine. Yeah. But yeah. Um I'm sticking to my nine point 
3.25 because oh, yeah. while, <laughs> yeah. while I feel like, um, I mean, we didn't have irritating Clara, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I've, if, it's, it's the same thing with the other two, the, the, with the girl who died and the woman who lived, how this one felt, I mean, there was, it was obviously suspenseful, but it felt slightly less epic for some reason. I don't know why, because it had the same amount of suspense. But any complaints that I might have had, that that monologue, you know, screw it, 2.5. I mean, not 2.5. 0.5? <laughs> yeah, 9.5. .5. I can't, I'm too hungry for this. 9.5. Yeah. 9.5? <laughs> um, and I will concur with that. Yeah. 9.5 as well. I did 9.5 last week, and I, I still feel it deserves a 9.5. Yeah, I mean... I yeah. mean, yeah. Um, Any little nitpicks that I could have had were were obviously made up for by that model. Um, so I mean, honestly, if I had to rate these two as like just one story, it'd probably be a nine. Yeah. I mean, that's what it I, really would. Yeah, because this so was too. a good Zygon story. Of course, yeah, you can't say anything. And again, it, it, <laughs> and again, it adds it adds a new concept of you know peaceful Zygons. Yeah. Zygons yeah. that aren't trying to destroy everything. Yeah. For once, yay! Yay! So we can let Zygons be Zygons. Zygons. <laughs> Us, Connor, you're not here to make that pun. So. so I, I filled in. You're welcome. It's because I killed Connor. Tonight I will be Miss Zygon. For all you musical theater fans. No. Or, or, uh, or, or, or did you kill a Zygon, Connor? Dun dun dun! <laughs> yes. Just uh, the episode there. That was great. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so Don't trust anybody! <laughs> yeah! Ah, well, you can trust, you, you, wait, you can trust them now, because everything is... Oh yeah, right. everything's fine. Yeah, yeah. Everything's all so, hunky-dory. It's, it's good, it's good. Um, you might have a doppelganger out there somewhere, but other than that... Hey, hey I mean, they're, they're there for to be your friend. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh, so I guess, I get, now I get why it's bad love for in, in, like, in Britain or the UK to have a doppelganger. Yeah. Zygons. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so, yeah. So that's our thoughts on Doctor Who series nine, episode eight, the da, uh, no, the Zygon inversion, <laughs> the Zalik inversion. Ew. That'd be interesting. Coming next week. No, we had um, no, we had that in the beginning of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the so series, the series were revolting. Yes. So um, on this week's couch, thank goodness we finally have more than us two. We have our guest Leighton Williams. I'm Chell. Chill, myself, Zane, and we will see you guys next week. Bye! Yeah.